All right. Welcome to GSF Weekly. We are in week number four of the 2023 football season. And as you can see, I am up right there, 17 to 14 in predictions. We have eight games every single week. And uh, I have predicted 17 games out of 24. That's not bad. That is not bad. And I think I've gotten a couple of scores correct. I haven't checked. I think you did. <laughs> we're we're, we're going to have to like completely like check that. Yeah. But we are in week four and we got some games, some really good games. No WCAL this week. All the teams are, uh, this is their bye week. So we're going to start things off with Wilcox at Kings Academy, Overfelt at Christopher, McClyman's. At San Ramon Valley, that should be a good one. St. Mary's, De La Salle, Ooh, that's a good one. California, Pittsburgh, Palo Alto at Los Gatos, that's an interesting one. And then we're going to go Saturday, Menlo Atherton at Menlo School, and Live Oak at Sobrato. The El Toro game, as I was told. So, yeah. Coach, I will start okay wilcox is looking really good right now so i cannot go against them i think they're gonna beat the king's academy 35 to 14 how did i come up with that score based on last game i think their offense is moving now so um king's academy is a well-coached team uh i know they got some young playmakers there um there's a few all-star candidates on that team too. So this is kind of like a mini uh, GSF all-star uh, showcase. That's why I'm going. <laughs> I'm going to scout. But I just see Wilcox as a, a a little bit more powerful team. This would be a really good test for King's Academy. Uh, did you know Prince is is on that team? I believe he's on that team. Um, is he really? I think How did so. I know that? So... Um, and they have that running back. He's a beast. Yeah. What do you think? I'm going to have to second you on that one. I'm going to go Wilcox. You know, my, my wife's been giving me a lot of, uh, a lot of flack for that. She's like, wow, look at you picking chargers every, every week now. It's like, no, I, I missed it one time and I made a mistake, but you know, 35, 14, like I'm going to second it. Like, Wilcox looks really good. They look really strong. Haven't seen too much of King's Academy, but you know, King's Academy, uh, since I, when I first moved out here to Gilroy, um, the first game I saw them play was against Christopher. And that was kind of like the start of like, wow, this is a team to really look out for. Yeah. So, you know, but, you know, we saw a lot of their players from last year, King's Academy. So, you know, big shoes to fill on those playmakers, but you know, if it's a young team, you know, see if they step up to the occasion but i think wilcox just with what they got uh with bonilla just just a player dude like yep. he's crazy so prove us wrong if you're tka make us proud if you're wilcox there you go next game overfelt christopher this is like <laughs> this is like my overfelt Against your Christopher. Yes, I am claiming Overfelt because they are a really good bunch of kids that um they just love football, man. Court co coach Carlo, like I, I did a one on one with them. I should upload that whole one on one interview. Um I think Overfelt's one of the only school, or if not in the most recent years, they're the ones that really like running the South consistently. No, 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 not to throw any shade on anybody. Santa Teresa is I'm on scared. the rebound right now. Old Grove, yeah. it's been a while. I mean, who else? Overfell. Yeah. They're producing guys. And Coach Carlos is like really consistent with that. So, so they, I mean, I saw them live. Um, this is going to be a 35-21 game, Coach. I know you love Christopher. And I, I I really like Christopher. 
You got some ballers in there. Um, a lot of them. But, but I think on the road, this is going to be a tough test for Overfelt. And I just think they're going to rise up. They're very quick. And and they got some hitters. 18 is a hitter, obviously. John is a hitter. Um, Duran is lightning fast. And their quarterback, man. Talk about, like, just a kid who 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 just loves playing and willing to do whatever it takes. He's the kicker. He's the quarterback. He's the security safety tackler on kickoff. <laughs> uh, they don't have a kicker. I don't think they have a kicker. So they, they struggle in that department, but I think they're going to, they're going to get it together. So I'm picking Overfelt. Oh, oh I see what you did there. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go with my I'm gonna go with my Christopher boys, you know. Um, you know, I they've just been getting better, like as the weeks have come like have passed. Uh, you know, you're when you watching them and you know, like, you know, having, you know, as much like you know, FaceTime I have with them, you know, they 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 update quite quite a bit. So it's like they really like did that whole thing of like week one, like growing pains like it's a whole new team they lost a lot of seniors a lot of leadership so it's like who's going to step up now they're starting to step up they're starting to figure out their identity and who they are um we already know a lot of those guys are all-stars on that team so you know not saying that you know overfelt doesn't have it like watching that you know that was highlights like yeah overfelt this is going to be i would say in terms of just a game this is probably one of the most balanced games we're going to watch. This is going to be good. This is going to be good football. Yeah. Like I, I'm, I'm really excited to like watch some good football um, between these two teams. So um, I think it's going to be close. Um, I'm going to say 24, 21. And you know, that that's Over, where like, I right? no Christopher. Cause, <laughs> cause, because I think I think it is going to come down to a special teams thing. I uh, really yeah. think so. Um, it, it, like these two teams are pretty evenly matched in terms of like you know the players that they have. Um, I mean, obviously, I can name all my Christopher kids, but I'm not going to. They know who they are. Um, but I just think like in terms of balance and just on like if you got to go off a of paper. This is the most balanced game that we're going to see. This is a good game before both of them head into league. So this is a good test. I think this will set the tone for the rest, both of their seasons, regardless of the outcome, this will set the tone. So, yeah, yeah but I'm going to go Christopher off of a, you know, off, yeah, 24, 21, three points. All right. All right. That sounds good. You know, one of the biggest games that was scheduled this year and it was a big deal last year and this year is going to be super entertaining i'm going to go to this one mcclyman's at san ramon valley san ramon valley is legit i mean they are very good they're very entertaining it's a high powered offense luke baker just threw like six touchdowns he's our offensive player of the week um i don't even know who they played but he threw six <laughs> <laughs> for like he had like 380 plus yards and um, he's just a very entertaining quarterback to watch. And it's going to be interesting how they do against McClyman's defense because McClyman's defense, we saw them against Bellman and Bellman couldn't do anything against McClyman. So I'm expecting this to be a close game. There are, they are going to score. I believe it's going to be 24, 21 Isaac Espinoza, my, special teams player of the week from week two. I think he's going to come through, man. He's going to be the game changer here. He's going to kick that game winning field goal. Okay. No pressure, Isaac. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to go San Ramon Valley. Um, you know, I haven't been able to watch them like just based off like what you've seen, but like I've had the opportunity to see some of their players in the past, um, you know, with just like past places that like I've been like, very grateful to like train at and like see the players that they are producing. And I think at that time when I was there, those kids were the young ones, they were the freshmen and they were putting in that work. So to see them now, like doing what they do and just knowing San Ramon Valley is just, you know, it's 
these are two really good, again, two dynamic programs. But I think San Ramon Valley is going to edge this 28-21. So I'm going to San Ramon Valley for the Wolves, right? The Wolves. Yes. That's where Anna Kagarakis went. And there is an Ike's Loving Sandwiches right next to San Ramon Valley High School. There you go. I'll be there. I'll be there before the game. (laughs) Up next. Ooh, this is a good one. Kevin is going to this game. St. Mary's at De La Salle. Let me talk about St. Mary's. I saw them at the 7-on-7, San Jose State 7-on-7 championships. And they, they won that championship game against, I believe it was against Grant. And during our seven on seven season, we saw a lot of these guys from St. Mary's. They play for 209 TMP. Samson Hunkin is one of the best QBs that I that I saw this actually the last couple of years, as far as seven on seven. And he was the guy that led St. Mary's to beat De La Salle last year, uh, ending the the North. Well, no, St. Francis was the one who ended the streak. But I mean, they, yeah, they, they, they beat De La Salle. I don't think they're going to do that this year. Now that De La Salle is back on the winning note, winning track, Jaden Jefferson, Drew Cunningham, Chris Biller. Oh man, Chris Biller. I, he's my favorite D line right now. That dude, I mean, when we do our draft, I'm going to draft Chris. I'm going to draft Colin Taitua, <laughs> Timo Paloka. <laughs> it's going to be a, it's going to be a crazy D line. Um, and 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 Toa, bye bye. Um, they they look great against St. Francis and uh, St. Francis. You know they hung there. I, mean, I told you, don't count out the Lancers this year. <laughs> They're gonna surprise some people. They got some mad mad underclassmen that are gonna, you know, step it up later on. But I, I'm gonna pick De La Salle, uh, thirty-five to twenty-eight. They're they're gonna score some points. Um, you know, I'm I'm looking to see uh Drew Cunningham have a really, really good game as a tight end and a, as a DN. So that's gonna be an entertaining one. For De La Salle, right? De La Salle, yes. I'm I'm picking De La Salle to win against St. Mary's. 35 showdown. Okay. I mean, yeah, De La Salle is going to – I mean, I'm going De La Salle on this one. Like, it's good to see them back in the win side. Um, they look motivated. And I think that's the thing. Like, once you get De La Salle started, like, they – that's when they start to roll. You know what I mean? So, but St. Mary's is still a tough team. You know, I think St. Mary's is still going to give them, like, you know, a run for their money on this one. Um, so, I'm calling 28-21. Okay. Okay. Nice, nice. Up next, Pittsburgh hosting California. Hostile territory. Ooh. But I'm picking the Pirates. Yeah. Pirates. They're just they're they're just looking really good right now, defensively and offensively. So 38-17, Pitt over Cal. That's my prediction. I'm going pit twenty eight zero. Like yeah, I I think they'll pitch a shutout. Um don't know too much about Cal High, but you know, with a team like Pitt, like good luck. <laughs> it's like one of those like good luck with with a team like that. Um I mean, again, California High, prove me wrong, you know, make me want to watch you. I don't know anything about you guys. <laughs> Palo Alto at Los Gatos, coach. This is this is a very, very interesting matchup because nobody expected Palo Alto to be good this year. And they're doing really, really good. Um, actually, no. I, I'm I'm that's that's not correct. Uh they've always been consistent. They had a coaching change last year. This year, they look like they have it together. So all the young guys that are that have come up to varsity, this varsity team is is they they got the chemistry going. And Los Gatos, they're just like, they're just rolling. They're waiting for the playoffs. Um, but I like Los Gatos in this one because they're going to be home. Uh, I, I, it's going to be a 28-14. Uh, 
uh, win for the Cats. Um, expect Jalen Thomas to have another great game against these guys. And, um, you know, that's that, that's my prediction. Very generous with that 14. <laughs> I say 28-7. They, they can score. Follow up. Uh, score. I know they can score. They got but... some big boys, dude. Yeah, I know they do. Um, I know they got some big boys, but you're you can you. I don't know if you can like. There's Jalen Thomas. Yeah, he's like your he's your spotlight star there. Like you know, he's he is like you get the ball in his hands, you get him involved in the game. Yeah, he's gonna do something about it. But that's the thing. Like it doesn't matter who touches the ball in Los Gatos. Like that's they true. can they can do everything. Their running attacks great. They hawk to the ball. They're fast. Like, you know, I, I think Los Gatos is like, I'll, I'll give, I'll give Palo Alto a touchdown. I'll say like, I'll even go as far as like, it'll be tied at the end of the first quarter, seven to seven. And then that's it. There you go. That's just, <laughs> Hey, uh, prediction, prediction. Yeah. Me wrong. If I Prove can't make wrong. it to San Ramon, I'm going to go to that game. But I really want to go one. to the McClyman San Ramon. It's just that traffic, that 680 traffic. Terrible. Took me three and a half hours to get to freaking Central Catholic last week. And I left at one o'clock. Oh. Yes. Bay Area that's, traffic. That's Back a subject for another day. <laughs> Menlo Atherton at Menlo School. The way things are going for Menlo Atherton right now, they're just having a tough time winning and finishing. Uh, Menlo School. Uh, I've always wanted to see this team, but I've I've been trying to keep up on Twitter, and they're really good at informing the media about their program and their wins and even their losses. They're very detailed. I think this is going to be a Menlo School game. It's going to be at Menlo School or Menlo's Field. Um, so it's going to be a twenty-one to seven. That that's my prediction. Twenty-one to seven, and um, blue and gold. Yes. So I'm going to go 17 to 3 Menlo School. <laughs> oh, I tried I tried to delay it a little bit, it doesn't work. But I'm going to go Menlo School on this Wait, one. Did you pick um, Palo Alto? No, I picked Los Gatos. You picked Los Gatos. Okay, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, but I'm going to go Menlo School on this one. I think it's going to be low, low scoring game just cuz like, you know, it's in the it's a I mean, that's a crosstown rivalry right there too. Yeah, yeah. So, I think there's is Whenever you get to these like rivalry games, like especially like these ones, it's they end up being a lot closer just because of like what's because everyone knows each other out there, you know, everyone's yeah. there. There's a lot more attached to it. Um, but I'm gonna say 17 3 Menlo School, it'll be lower scoring, but it uh, Menlo's gonna run Menlo School. Sorry, can't just say Menlo Menlo School then Knights, right? Yep, Knights. Yeah, yep. we're gonna go with the Knights. On this one. Night. All right. Last but not least, the El Toro Bowl. El Toro Bowl. Live Oak at Sobrado. Mm. Mm. You know what? I know Coach Rueda. He's the Me head too. coach at Sobrado. Noah Taylor's having a great season so far. Live Oak. That's an interesting team. Yeah, let's. I'm that, loving the hype, though. I'm loving the hype. Yeah, so, a great I know attitude. Coach Reda. I'm going to challenge Coach Reda and his squad and Noah Taylor, our offensive player of the week last week, to prove me wrong on this one. I'm going with the the visiting team. No, I'm not. It's going to be Sobrato, twenty-eight to seven. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. Okay. I'm picking Sobrato. Prove me right. I thought I was going to pick Live Oak. I, I, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about it. Um, but I think that this is, this is they're at home, man. Sobrato's at home. You know, can't beat the dogs at home. When the dogs are home, that's their home. You know, so I don't know. I, 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 I want to see. I, I might go to this game before I go to the Stanford game. Uh, Noah Taylor, entertain me. Great, 
great player. You know, um, I think, I mean, and I, I love Coach Rueda. You know, it, that he's doing a really oh, good I job. Like coming. <laughs> <laughs> you, you already know, like, whenever I talk like that, it's going to be a but. But, you know, Live Oak just has a lot of guys. I know. Live Oak's got a lot of guys. I like, think they're capable and, of proving me wrong. Yeah, so I, I'm I'm going to go with Live Oak and, you know, I score, score, score. Just know, Rueda, I love you, man. And <laughs> Noah, I love you, bro. But I'm going 35 0, live O. No yeah. way. Yeah. And it's, it's nothing against, it's nothing against, it's once live O plays, like when they play, right? And, you know, I, I, I saw I saw a little bit. I mean, they played they they played here earlier the season. Their first game was here in the town in Gilroy. I, I call the town like it's Oakland, but it's not. It's Gilroy. Um, Gee. But but man, like they just wouldn't stop, you know. And there's a lot there's a lot going on there. They have a lot of athletes on that team, and they're quick. They're very fast. Their coaching staff like has this, this coaching staff is very traditional. You know, and they're very like they're very hard nosed players. So, again, you know, it's just you got to stop it. And the thing is, though, like when Live Oak gets going, like they they will go, they they will go. So I'm gonna go with Live Oak on this one. It's no disrespect to Sobrato. Like I love what you guys are doing over there. I love the players over there, the coaching staff. Like everyone is like, you know, you're our guys. I'm keeping it like strictly football, based on football. I'm gonna have to go with Live Oak. What was the score again? 35 0. I, I have 28 7 Sobrato. Well, prove me wrong. Like, I want to be proven wrong on this one. So, as much as I'm saying I be it, proven right. <laughs> yeah. Noah Taylor, PSA, prove me wrong. Show me. Show me something. Uh, either way, he's going to get a nice from me because he was our offensive player of the week last week. So, Anyways, yeah. that is your predictions, people. You want to take a stab at the Stanford Sac State game? Who's going to win that game? A lot of local guys. That's why I'm going. Yeah, because the fastest man in CCS from last year is playing. Exactly. Danny Scudero. Um, uh, I think it's going to be closer than a lot of people think this yeah. year. Um, especially since majority of that Stanford staff is from Sac. <laughs> it's from the Sac State team. Yep. So, so they know what's going on, um, but, you know, Stanford is still kind of like in, I, I want to say, kind of a rebuild. Oh, they're, they're still kind of, yes, they're still kind of rebuilding. And it's just going to be see like, you know, who's going to come out firing more, um, and who kind of wants it more than the other team. But, you know, Stanford, Stanford is Stanford. And I, re I rarely bet against Stanford unless I really know. So. Plus, like, I have family that went to Stanford, so I can't really bet against them. They'll say something really mean to me. So I'm going to go with Stanford on this one. But, but it'll be close. I, I think it's going to just be like close. a one-touchdown game. Yeah, I'm, go I'm going with Coach Troy. That's my son's name, Troy. Love that name. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm going with Stanford. But I, I am excited to see some of the local guys um, on the Sac State squad. And... Breaking news, people. We're going to be doing some colleges this season. So Pac-12 season is coming. Pac-12 is ending. So we might as well yeah, something. go and, and, and document some some last season stuff. I, I definitely want to see Cal, uh, Stanford, and, and also San Jose State. So Kevin Kevin's going to be working on that with me. And yeah, uh, no. we're going to be our goal is to take a look at all our, our alums, our ba Jaden Rashad is coming next weekend, I believe, or in two weeks uh, with his. No, 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 no. They're away. They're away. But um, yeah, Kyle, Kyle and Stanford, we used to cover uh, a lot of their games and yeah, we're bringing it back this year. Yeah. Good game. We're bringing it's it back, game. coach. 
that's always a good game to watch. Like I used to always go to those games. The the axe game is such a fun game to watch. So if anyone yeah. ever has an opportunity just to go watch the game, just for the atmosphere, just go to that game. It's so it's so much fun. Well, it's a lot better when you're on the sideline and and you got True. the monsters on the field. It's crazy. Man. <laughs> no, I I think it's time to go back. I know in the last few years we we kind of left the college scene, but I think this this is the year to to come right back and you know see uh, see some of our alums a lot of them are, are a lot of there's a lot of bay area kids in the pac-12 and the mountain west so really looking forward to uh seeing those guys play uh other than that coach what is on your mind or do you have oh, i think we do um let's see what's on our mind i think well so i was sent a quote from somebody about the state championships why oh you know. yeah so I'll, I'll read the tweet it's uh morning thoughts there should be a state championship and state bowl games i'm old school but california has got 15 state champs every year coach bell coach bell he's not wrong like no he he's not wrong and i think it's great. Like, you know, we're creating opportunity for like, you know, these schools and I, I love it. It's, it's fantastic, but it's, it's also kind of like overkill at the same time. Like, I think, you know, I, I think you and I have like, we've dabbled about this a couple of times before, but I think, I think when it's a state game, like you, it's, it's gotta be like the best, it's the best versus the best, you know, in that game, like just, not and that's no disrespect to anybody else that's won a state championship game, but it's like we don't need like fifteen. We don't need like D. What is it? Open to D ten. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's what it feels like. It feels yeah. like it's like open to division ten. Like there's so well, many. There's fifteen. Games. There's division fourteen. Oh geez. There's like A double A, double A A A. It's like it's crazy. And, you know. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go finish. Yeah, and and it's like when it's a state game, like it it shouldn't be played in a like like there should never be a like a home field advantage. Like like they I think they flip it, right? Is it NorCal this year they're playing it up here? No, it's it's still it's all, it's, Yeah, but it's a neutral, it's a neutral place, right? Like it's SoCal. <laughs> you know, I mean it's still technically SoCal, but it's like you know, some of these games, it's like it's double a like we we don't even have the a's like these like power divisions like even like figured out yet in the state of california like we're weird over here so i i agree with um coach bell i think a bowl like bowl games it's it's something to still fight for i think you know if you you can kind of make your own i guess rendition of like what college football does with bowl games and you still get an opportunity to play, but it's like, you know, like when you get knocked out, like when you're done with CCS, you don't make it to NorCal's, right? You can still, there's still an opportunity for you to play, but it's not a state game. It's just a, it's a bowl game. And this opens up, you know, opportunities for, for everybody, you know, you, you're not just opening up opportunities for teams and high schools, but you can't like, just like with that, you can also open up like, like, what if we do like a, just for an example, what if there's a get sports focus silicon valley bowl oh that, Ooh, like, coach, you're talking like that would be <laughs> great that'd be awesome or like the xeo strength conditioning bowl like or you do like some kind of like bowl like that like it's sponsored by like now you're not only like showing that the community is also about it but now it's like now you're bringing the state together to put things together like this and when you do the state games just do like your for sure, it's like you you have your your regionals, and then just have those top play, like those top two teams play. You're a NorCal champion, your Southern California champion. Boom, go at it, and then just have everyone like based. And then I think I think it was I think you and I kind of talked about it a little bit too. And I I actually really liked how you said it. It should be based on strength of schedule, and you know what else did you say? Strength of schedule and yeah, like an invite based on that like i i like that idea i think it's something that should be considered i think someone should write a proposal coach bell (laughs) write a proposal about it 
And dude, we'll, you, I guarantee you, if this is proposed, this will probably get seconded a ton. Like, and I think it would bring a little bit more to the areas. And then if you say bowl game, and let's say you're like a small school, like even though like you did win a bowl game, you might just attract more people because you're still going. That's that's how you do it. That's how you keep going. Doesn't matter as long as you keep going in the postseason. Makes yeah. you strong. That's no, it's a take. cool. It's a cool idea. Um, I think it it will all come down to why. Why should we do it that way? So in 2005 cif announced that well prior to 2005 they announced that there was going to be a a state championship in california finally so they had five five division so it was oh i don't think they had the open i think it was division one two three four it was just five. yeah because i was still in high school it was still it was just d1 two three four five yeah and i thought they picked the the right teams to go to those bowl games and it was a show and it was beautiful then three or four years later, they added, they expanded to like 10 or maybe like eight. They doubled mm-hmm. it. And then now we're we're at 15. So it's like, you don't even know who won like the last division because it's like, there's so many of them, uh, unless you're from that town or from that area, then, you know, and you win and then, then those people know you, but it's crazy. I think now it's um it's kind of out of control. Um good for the teams that are playing in it, but it should go back to the way like it started. Like the D1 through so, 5 yeah, like I think so. like it's it's those are the five best teams from Northern California versus the five best teams from SoCal. And then you do an invitational with bowls like it's not saying you're better or worse. It's like this is like hand picked. Like this is like voted on. There's enough coaches here that could vote on this. Oh yeah. Like I think, so I think there's more and than they, enough that would vote. They can also use the PowerPoint system to determine who deserves to go and who doesn't. And give so when you're playing for the state championship, you're playing for the championship, right? Right. That's prestige. That should be sacred, you know, open division, division one, division two, division three, four, four, five. Uh, but for the bowl games give those teams incentive to where like maybe get get like a presenting sponsor and that sponsor will give the school like twenty thousand dollars if they win donate donation donation they cannot pay them (laughs) it'll be right be like in the form of donation i think it could work um but right now it's like I, i you know i'm a big fan of santa Teresa. they played for a state championship on their home field and then I remember there's a uh, there's a story about a team that drove all the way from SoCal to this one small school in NorCal where the field was just like soggy and muddy and and it was a terrible field condition, but they still played the game. And obviously the visiting team lost um, and it was like a close game. And, and their complaint was like, why are we playing a state championship game on a field that looks like crap? <laughs> and it, so if you're going to have 15 state championship game, at least put them in venues that are neutral and like Good. big enough to, to actually host the event and, and make it, make them make it special. Junior colleges are, are are a great example. Uh, you know, San Jose. I know Bellman played for the state championship at San Jose City College, but that's also their home field, right? Uh, Cerritos College is where they play the Open D one, D two, D three. I think D four as well. Uh, in in Southern California, beautiful stadium. That works. Um, but yeah, I think it's just a matter of like, maybe like spending a little bit more money, putting a little bit more money back into the to the to the event the kids yeah and to yeah. the kids because at the end of it it's like okay you you're getting all the and i'm familiar with sponsorships it's like you're getting all these corporate sponsorships and i know football is not the only sport but football makes the most so you know what's a couple more thousand 
ten thousand to get a venue that's actually worth it, make the experience memorable, not like terrible, and and just kids are getting injured on like soggy fields. It's like you you play all year on in a nice turf and then you go to a uh, 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 a grass field that's all muddy. I thought that was a terrible thing when I heard about that. And you guys can look that up online. So great question, great idea. I'm all for just keeping it five and then and then the bowl games. You heard us here, CIF. <laughs> Do it. We don't want to give them too much ideas though. <laughs> too much free free ideas. <laughs> But True. no, I think I think the CIF are doing their best. I think they're doing a, they've done a great job with all these events. Uh, the number one thing is safety, right? You got to have a safe event. I know. I mean, we're familiar with putting events together, and safety is always number one. I would recommend having an EMT on location for every single game, especially high level games. We were at Central Catholic last weekend. There was an EMT there. Park right next to the field. I remember going up to him. I was like, "Hey, great to see you guys." And I just started talking to him and asking him about like, "Are you guys here every single game?" And they're like, "No, this is the first time like we're we're actually here." I was like, "Oh, okay." So that was interesting. When you have games like Sarah Central Catholic, Sarah St. Francis, De La Salle St. Mary, you gotta have EMT on. on on standby because those are very very high profile games where the kids are not really you know light when it comes to hitting like they 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 hit and things can go wrong quick and you don't want to have a 20 minute delay just to get a an ambulance or something you know so i know they have athletic trainers but sometimes you got to be ready ready so you gotta be ready. That's man. that's what's on my mind, people, and that's what's on Coach Andrew's mind. Oh hey, yeah. Else? No, we'll save that one for next week because it's like right before our league starts. So we'll talk about what's on my mind. Um, league. Hey, shout out to Coach Machado, our GSF Coach of the Week, posting today, which is gonna be Wednesday. Yeah. But we'll save it for next week because that's when uh, I think majority of the league is starting next week. They're all starting next week. Yeah, so we'll just uh, we'll wait for we'll wait for that for next week. All right, all right. That's my Matthew McConaughey impersonation. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> Start listening to him on Calm. Man, oh, he's got a Yeah, he that yeah, he really puts you to sleep. You know who oh, I've been God. listening to? Ooh. Ike, our good old Ike's loving sandwiches. He started a podcast, or I think it's someone else's podcast. I, I, he's starting to do a lot more uh, content. Oh, I love it. These days, I'm gonna hit you up, Ike, because I want to learn from the man. Okay. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. We gotta bring him on here. Let's see what he thinks. Yeah, he's a busy dude, but I'm pretty sure we'll catch him one of these days. Anyways, Coach Andrew. I'm going to give you the bald-headed thumbs up. <laughs> and there's the fist bump. All right. Week four, baby. Week four. Week four.